Good evening, Wildcat Nation. Welcome to the 2020 Westchester Country Day School Varsity Athletic Recognition Ceremony. Although we are coming to you this evening from a different platform, we will still be putting on a great show to honor all of our great Wildcat teams, student athletes, and coaches this evening. This spring has certainly been unique and trying, but we will have so many wonderful memories to celebrate from the 2019-20 school year. We have a great night in store where we will celebrate team, individual, and program success. It has been an incredible year at Westchester, and I know tonight will be filled with smiles, tears, laughter, and so many great memories that you will share with your family members from the coziness of your couch. First, I wanna say thank you to the seniors. Your senior year ended so abruptly, and I'm sure you have had so many things growing th through your mind these last few weeks. However, if there's one thing that I hope you learn from your coaches during your time at WCDS is Wildcats don't quit. You all have had an incredible attitude this spring, and I'm so proud of you all. I know this will only motivate you and drive you to continue to accomplish great things in the future. So thank you, seniors. I can't tell you how much we love you and how proud of you we are. Tonight, we will celebrate our Wildcat student athletes and all that goes with having the best athletic program in North Carolina. Our student athletes have excelled in and out of the classroom and have represented our wonderful school, your families, and themselves with class, dignity, and an incredible level of sportsmanship at all levels. Tonight, we will toast our Wildcat coaches. This group of coaches is extremely special. They care about your kids and have a passion to teach and mentor all of these kids, not just the kids on their own teams. They work together to build pride, work ethic, passion, and in the process, build relationships that will last a lifetime. Please help me in thanking all of our great coaches and work all the wonderful student athletes have done this year. A couple of quick thank yous. Thank you to the Westchester Booster Club, led by Brack Brigman, Colin Merritt, Emily Brigman, and Avery Merritt. A small but mighty team who leads our Booster Club with all of the concessions, spirit items, and all of the behind the scenes work that goes into running a great athletic program. Thank you to our incredible Booster Club and all of the team moms and dads for all of your great work this year. A special thank you to Jackie Argo, Dawn Frank, Laurie Hogan, Carrie Beth Scott, Ashley Timberlake, Penny Rowe, and Amy Carey. These seven do so many behind the things, things for me and the school, and I can't thank them enough for helping the Westchester Athletic Program this year. Our incredible athletic trainer and coach, Mara Duncan. Mara does a fabulous job treating and getting our student athletes back into action when an injury happens. Thank you, Mara, for all you do for all of our student athletes. You are the best trainer in North Carolina. Thank you to head of school, Cobb Atkinson, for providing us with everything we need to run a first-rate athletic program. And Mary Kiever and Mark Braun for being great administrative teammates and always doing everything that you can to help our student athletes thrive in and out of the classroom. And a special thank you to Marcina Davis and Chris Green and their crews 
for making sure our facilities and fields are always top notch. Over the last couple of years, I've changed things up a little bit and had one of our very own student athletes officially welcome everyone to this great night. So I wanted to keep their tradition going. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome to the camera a true senior leader and a three sport student athlete, David Adams. Hello fellow Wildcats and welcome again to the 2019-2020 Westchester Athletic Awards Ceremony. It is a great honor that I am able to welcome each and every single one of you to this unusual version of our normal award assembly. A month and a half ago, I was extremely worried that this event was going to be missed. But when Coach Schwartz asked me to speak to all of you and be part of this historic ceremony, I was extremely excited. This athletic year has been filled with many exciting memories and sadly deprived of a true ending. But nobody should dwell on these missed opportunities. COVID-19 has taken away a large majority of our time together, even leading to this virtual assembly. But the Westchester community has stayed strong through these uncertain times. It was truly amazing to watch the spring season teams connect all their members together through separate clips and deliver the message that we are all still strong. This connection away from our school shows that the Westchester blue and white is deep in the veins of all of us. Now, even though it seems that we've been robbed of a full athletic year, we still have so much to celebrate. Starting off, fall sports were filled with fantastic achievements. Cross country had to overcome many obstacles and still had a great season. Volleyball got a taste of the new young talent that is coming into high school and the boys' soccer team returned to the state semifinals for the third year in a row. Moving on to winter sports, basketball and the, and the cheerleading squad had an awesome season, and the student section was more lively than it has been in years. Our swim teams placed better in states than they have in a long time. It was a great winter season for all sports. Finally, we reached spring season. Now. It is hard to grasp the few weeks that we had together, but I already know that this was meant to be one of the best few months in Westchester history. I know that I enjoyed my time during soccer, swim, and the little bit of track that I had this year. And I cannot wait to see what you returning students can accomplish next year. With the guidance of all these great coaches and the Westchester school spirit, I definitely can say I wouldn't want have wanted to spend my 13 years anywhere else. During my time at Westchester, the connections that I had made with my coaches was unbelievable. Coach Schwartz has been preparing me to be the person that I am today since I was in kindergarten, all coming from my first soccer camp. Now, I may have been running around and picking flowers at my first soccer camp, not too worried about the actual soccer part, but Coach Schwartz taught me my first lesson that I needed to learn to focus. I kept coming back to soccer camp through the years and eventually started to focus more until he started preparing me for varsity in middle school. I was encouraged to start running track and come to kick arounds in the summer. I kept on progressing and when I was on the varsity team, I realized that I truly had become focused and grew so much and got to respect my teammates and the other teams around me. There is no way that I could have gotten any of this experience at another school and their athletic program. Thank you to each and every single one of you that has made this year for us seniors amazing. And know that next year, us seniors will be sporting Westchester each day. Now let's enjoy these well-deserved awards. Thank you, go Cats. Thank you, David. At this time, I want to quickly recognize one student athlete that will be continuing their athletic career at the college level. A special thank you to Reagan Atkinson for all of your help in making dreams come true for these student athletes. Congratulations, Maggie Wheatley, who will be running cross country and track at Denison University next fall. Maggie, we will all be following your wonderful career at the next level. Good luck to you in Ohio. At this time, we would like to recognize 
our first year varsity athletic award winners. I will call out their names by grade and then you will be receiving a Westchester W letter in your packet at the end of the week. Seventh graders, Ava Apple, Mary Frances Collins, Lucy Corrigan, Maddie Dial, Audrey Guffey, Josh Hammond, Miracle Olubini, Evelyn Porter, Megan Rydenauer, Brooks Robinson, Caden Riker, Addison Sage, Elizabeth Schof, Graham Tucker, Zane Williamson. And now for the eighth graders, Emily Carey, Morgan Grace Cotter, Avery Gasson, Covington Hauser, Ben Hunsberger, Katie Grace Lavelle, Kate Morgan, Bennett Robinson, Tate Vogler, Riley Yanez, Laura Yoakum, Davis Beck. And now for the freshmen, Emma Engel, Electra Farson, Liza Foster, Lucy Larkin Hurd, Madeline McWhorter, Anna Beth Merritt, J3 Swindell, and Evan Walters. And for our sophomores, Ben Bublitz, Lulu Culler, Henry Erickson, Zen Sadler. And for our juniors, Griffin Francois, Libba Latham. And our seniors, Ellison Beaver, Abby Mazingo, and Trey Woodall. Congratulations to you all for your first year letter award winner. At this time, I would like to invite Dave Carrier to the stage to start our fall varsity athletic team presentations. I'm Dave Carrier, and I'd like to introduce our varsity girls golf team. Denny Lewis, senior. Charlotte Martin, sophomore. Lyndon Briggs, eighth grade. Abby Kiever, eighth grade. Georgia Moorefield, eighth grade. Maggie O'Keefe, eighth grade. Mary Frances Collins, seventh grade. Madison Dial, seventh grade. And Addison Sage, seventh grade. Before I get started with the team, I'd like to give a few thank yous. Um, Amy Lewis was our team mom, and she's been the team mom since the beginning, and I really want to thank Amy. She made it so easy for me, and uh, we had a great partnership. And so, Amy, I'm going to miss you about as much as I'm going to miss your daughter. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach Schwartz for letting us start the team and being instrumental in that and supporting the girls and me the whole way. It's great to have another golf lover um, as a boss. The last people I really want to thank are our parents. Um, what a great group of parents we had. They always had great attitudes, whether the girls really played good, whether we struggled, golf's a tough game. The parents were always there to encourage the girls and actually did anything I needed and were just a joy to be around. So I can't imagine a better group of parents. And thank you guys for everything you've done for me and the girls in our program. Uh, we've came a long way. This is our second year of golf for the varsity girls. And last year we did well, but we learned it was a learning process for us. This year, we started to get better. We saw it every day. Practice was a key for us. In practice, we'd either play and get our nine holes in, or we would practice on the short game, on putting, chipping, um, and get a little competitive with it. And, and that, that's, where you, that's where you get better is in practice. And these girls were so fun in practice every day. I mean, we, we laughed and joked a lot, especially on the bus rides over. Um, so it was lighthearted. But when it was time to get better, the girls were always working on it. And, and the really cool thing about these girls are when we saw improvement, they saw it too, and they enjoyed it, and they had fun with it. So uh, the, it, it was remarkable. Our improvement was remarkable. I got to thank Denny Lewis. Denny Lewis is the godmother of golf at Westchester Country Day. We basically started this program for Denny. She was playing on the boys team um, and hung in there and did great. And I remember uh, myself and Coach Schwartz and Denny, we were all kind of batting back and forth. And we found out a lot of girls really wanted to play. So without Denny, this I think it would have still came, but it wouldn't have came this fast. So Denny was great, and what a role model she is for the girls. 
So having Denny there as a senior leader and a great player, she was player of the year, her junior year in the conference, um, was just meant a whole lot to all the girls. And I know they're going to miss her a ton. They already are. Um, the cool thing about this year is, so we play in matches and we play against the same teams a lot, about once a week. We didn't win a conference match. And I can't remember how many we had, three or four conference matches, um, but we won the conference championship when it counted. It was really cool. We were all gathered around. Uh, the girls finished playing, and we were playing pretty good. And, I, you know, me riding around and touching base, I was like, well, we got a chance. Well, one of our golfers wasn't in yet, and it was Charlotte Martin. And we knew that Charlotte had to come through with a good score when we were coming in, but we didn't want to put a lot of pressure on her. So we were like, all right, when she comes in, don't, don't make a big deal out of it. She came in and gave me a card, and she goes, I played okay. Well, her score won us the conference championship uh, when she came in with that score, and the girls went crazy, and we were so excited. Um, I'm not going to say that we didn't expect to win, but it was somewhat of a surprise when we pulled our best round of the year in the conference championship, but that's what great teams do. Um, Madison Dow was the player of the year in our conference. She is a seventh grader who had an unbelievable season. I was so proud of Madison, and she's going to be a great player and a great leader for us going forward. And the season she had, was it was just remarkable for somebody so young. Uh, Denny Lewis Charlotte and Charlotte Martin both made all-conference as well. So we had the player of the year and two all-conference players. The cool thing about golf is they also have different people step up all the time. And we had different younger members of the team continue to step up step up and provide great scores for us. Um, we had a state tournament at the end of the year, and we didn't qualify as a team. That's one of our goals going forward. But uh, Madison and Denny did qualify. They played in Pinehurst, played well, and it was Denny's second time and Madison's first time, and she gained a lot of experience that's going to get her a long way going forward. We have a skills competition every year that are kind of barred from Coach Schwartz. I was tired of him showing us up at the banquet where we give, instead of a jacket, we go all the way with a full pantsuit, a green, beautiful pantsuit that I purchased. I'm, and nothing's too good for my girls. So I purchased, the, purchased this pantsuit, and Denny was the winner of our skills competition last year. You know what? She won it this year, too. Denny, I know you haven't taken that thing off. You're wearing that pantsuit every day. You continue to wear it. Before you go back to school, though, I need it because we're going to have a new pantsuit skills challenge winner next year. I know you're going to miss that. My coach's award goes to the girl I talked about a couple minutes ago, Charlotte Martin. Charlotte did a great job for us. Uh, she kept getting better and better and better, and it has unlimited potential, and I'm excited about her being the team leader next year as a junior. The Wildcat Award goes to Denny Lewis. Denny is our only senior who had another remarkable year for us. In two years, she was player of the year one year, all conference, qualified for the state tournament. And I, I just, I can't imagine a better person to lead and to teach these young girls. Denny, I'm going to miss you as well, all the girls. Our most valuable player is Madison Dial. Madison's poise and dedication to the game, it inspires me. There's no telling, the, the sky's the limit for her. I love, love seeing her get better every day. I see her at the ranges around town, and I know Madison is playing great, but her best is yet to come. To all the girls, I just want to say, I love this season. I love you guys. Can't wait for the fall to see you again. Denny will miss you. Thank you. This year's girls varsity tennis team consisted of Abby Mazingo, Sophia Chaudhry, Kate Leonard, Dory Kiever, Claire Smith, Emma Whitlock, Olivia Beaver, Lily Wilson, Lucy Larkin Hurd, Ava Apple, and I'm the coach, Jeff Hunt. The fall girls tennis season was everything a coach could ask for in terms of growth. We had several new players, such as Claire Smith, Olivia Beaver, and Lucy Larkin Hurd, who all rotated through different positions as they learned the ropes and tried out both singles and doubles. I was incredibly impressed by this trio's flexibility and willingness to give everything their all, and especially after being brand new to the team and mostly new to the sport as well. 
Additionally, we had a senior player who was also a tennis first timer, Abby Mazingo, who couldn't have made me prouder. She always tried hard, never said no to a match, and I hope this year's experience will spark an athletic interest in her that she'll keep for years to come. And on the opposite end of things, we had a seventh grader on the team, Ava Apple, and I was so proud of how she played at her number three position, regularly facing girls twice her height, without ever flinching. Helping her through it all was her invaluable doubles partner, Kate Leonard, who truly took Ava under her wing, acting like the best possible cross between a mentor, big sister, and friend. Kate was everything you could ask for in terms of a lead for the second doubles team, offering guidance and humor, and she also did great in her singles position as well. For her unflinching and incredibly consistent play this year, Kate Leonard gets the team's Wildcat Award, and I just wish we could meet in person so I could give it to her. Her MVP award goes to Dory Kiever, who played at her first position, which was both new to her and which we, she faced with bravery and gusto. Dory competed against the best every other school had to offer, and Dory was put in this position for reasons on top of her great tennis ability. Though times were usually tough, Dory never got down about her challenging matches, and her attitude is what kept her team going. Along with Emma Whitlock, who sustained an early injury, but who still came to match after match to offer her support and encouragement, Dory was one of our team's co-captains, and I absolutely can't wait to have her back next year, giving inspirational pep talks and facing other top players with that calm stoicism we've all come to know and love. The final award this year will go to two players. Two girls stepped up equally in ways that both stood out to me and which were vital to our team functioning. The first coach's award goes to Sophia Chaudhry, who had long been a tennis practice player. We really needed her this season, and so she was convinced to be both seated in singles and doubles. Sophia ended up being stellar, and I was impressed not just by how many matches she played, which actually ended up being the most of any girl on our team, but also by her pos positivity and absolutely smiley demeanor. We all along with her was Lily Wilson, who was not able to play in every match due to, a, due to surgery, but who dressed down along with all the other girls at every single instance. Lily always stayed to cheer her, class, her teammates on. She always helped clean up courts and she never once looked down or sad. Lily was the heart and soul of the team. And along with everyone else, I can't wait to see her back next August. Thank you so much to Mrs. Mary Kiever for being our team mom and what a terrific season we had this year, girls. I look forward to more future growth and we'll get them next year. Hello everyone, I'm Lindsay Hall, the varsity girls volleyball coach. Um, I have nine wonderful young ladies um, on my team this year. And um, the first one is Reagan Cottrell, senior, Olivia Cecil, sophomore, Ella Timberlake, a sophomore, Madeline Adams, a freshman, Annabeth Merritt, a freshman, Natty Roberts, a freshman, Emily Carey, eighth grade, Morgan Grace Connor, eighth grade, and Cummington Hauser, eighth grade. Um, we had a very small, um, small but very talented team this year. And our 2019 volleyball um, team, it was absolutely a wonderful and very talented young group of women. It was definitely a season of growth on and off the court. Um, we had a lot of stiff competition, um, but that was very good for this group of girls. They, even though they were extremely young, they showed tremendous growth and um, throughout the whole year. And I couldn't have, couldn't have been any more proud of them by the end of the by the end of the year. Um, the special awards. I'm gonna my first award. Um, our MVP goes to a young lady who is extremely young. Um, she. Um, is, has the very the, the natural ability to um, a volleyball. You can just tell from the get go from that she is extremely um, natural and she um, works hard and practices and gives gives it her all in every game. And um, I look forward to having her the rest of her high school season, not only on the court but off the court, and watching her grow um, with volleyball and as a young woman. So our MVP this um, year goes to Morgan Grace Connor. Our next award is our wild, my um, Wildcat Award goes to a young lady who was the least experienced in um, with the sport. 
Uh, and she, this was her first year actually playing volleyball, but you would never be able to tell by watching her um, if you didn't know that it was her first year. She is an extremely um, coachable young lady. Everything I asked of her or showed her one time, she would, she would do it and you would think, oh my goodness, I can't believe that was the first time she's ever done it. Uh, I will miss her tremendously as she is our only senior this year and um, I wish her the best in everything that she does uh, after she leaves Westchester. This uh, year's Wildcat Award goes to Reagan, Reagan Cottrell. And then I have two coaches awards. Um, one, uh, one of the coaches awards goes to a young lady who is silent but very intense and she steps up to the plate with whatever I ask her to do. Um, she works extremely hard. I've had her for a couple years and I'm excited to have her for the next couple years as well. Uh, she has played many different positions and she's very tiny but mighty is what I tell her and she has improved a whole lot as well. So the first coach's award is Ella, Ella Timberlake. And my second coach's award goes to a young lady who is kind of opposite. She's very vocal and intense and um, sometimes I have to kind of bring her back down to a, a level of, okay, you know, we gotta kinda uh, just keep it, keep it more, a little more calm and encouraging, but she did an amazing job um, with the leadership. She stepped in as our setter and she had never set before and she's very young as well and I'm extremely excited to have her for the next few years. And our other coach's award is Anna Beth Merritt. And a couple thank yous that I'd like to give. Um, or to the parents, uh, all you know, the parents I've got with, a, with three young kids, myself at home, I, I've always felt very supported and encouraged and whenever, you know, with my kids coming to the games or just, you know, just throughout the whole season, I felt very, um, very encouraged from you all. And um, the season couldn't, couldn't go as smooth without an amazing team mom. And our team mom this year is Avery Merritt. And so I thank you so much for being organized where in areas that I'm not organized in and helping the season go very smoothly. And also, I'd like to thank Coach Schwartz, um, as always, he, uh, for his guidance and his um, encouragement throughout the season. A lot of stuff, you know, happens and is worked through behind the scenes and whatever I ask of him or whatever I need of him, he's always very nice and about it and helps me get through whatever situation it is. And lastly, I wanna thank Mara, my sweet, sweet Mara. Um, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about her because there'll be lots of tears coming out and I can't do that. So I have um, appreciated her so, so much. So um, I just want to say thank you so much to Mara. And um, I would do anything to keep her here for the rest of the time that I'm here at Westchester, but I know that she's going to do much um, bigger things because she is absolutely amazing. She has the kindest soul and I really, she's like a sister, so we've grown so close and um, she will be extremely missed from me and the whole team. So Coach Halger is going to have to step up um, and be my, be my little sounding board. Um, the last thing I want to leave y'all with is a, is a poem that I found. Um, it says, when this, when this is over, talking about the pandemic, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium, roaring, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, and just life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be, and may we stay that way. Better for each other because of the worst. Wishing you all safety and happiness. And I look forward to the, um, the fall for the next volleyball season and the growth of this program and just um, seeing my girls again. Love you all. Take care. Boys and girls cross country this year. We have Maggie Wheatley, senior, all conference, all state. Katie McWright, Molly McWhorter, Anna Sloan Culp, Kate Dyson, all conference, all state. 
and the Sloan Copa's all-conference, by the way. Grace Evans, Sophia Singer, Connor Apple, Caroline Griffith, Ollie Schwartz, Finn Fleming, and Caden Riker. Girls Cross Country. This year was by far the best team ever assembled for Girls Cross Country. We had a great summer of training and everyone was ready to compete. We ran into a terrible situation where we lost one of our top runners, Ollie Schwartz, to injury, which could have put our team goals into a panic. But Sophia Singer stepped up to big time to be our number five spot and running the best of her life along with Grace Evans, being as consistent as possible even while managing her asthma during the races. We finished the regular season undefeated 16-0 and headed into the conference meet with our goal of defeating our rivals for Scythe Country Day, which we did easily winning by 20 points. We had three girls make all conference, Maggie Wheatley, Kate Dyson, and Anna Sloan Culp. We then moved on to the state meet, finishing second place, tying for our best finish ever. I would like to commend Ollie for trying desperately to get back into racing shape at the end of the season, but she had just missed too much training. I would also like to acknowledge a new runner to the team, senior Kitty McWright, who brought so much fun and loved her on the team, even though it was just for one year. For the awards this year, MVP, Maggie Wheatley. This runner was easily our MVP for the season. Not only did she perform the best results, but was clearly our glue that motivated the team in our daily practices, which is really where the meets are won or lost. She began her summer training with a clear goal to run in college and make all state. She trained up to nine miles a day during the summer and the results came quickly. She was our number one runner in every meet. She led our team to the conference title, finishing third overall in the conference. She then ran the state meet, finishing the highest ever by Westchester girl in history, finishing sixth overall, making first team all state. She is on the second female runner to go on and run in college and look forward to watching her run next year at Denison University. MVP, Maggie Wheatley. The Girls Wildcat Award. Well, I've spoke about this wonderful runner for several years. She is a quiet one in the sense of her training and racing credentials are off the chart. She is competitive. Did I tell you, she is competitive and as this is an understatement. She never complains and is always a team runner first and foremost. Years prior, she would worry about performing up to par at big races but this year she looked forward to the big meets and wanted to race at the top of her game. She was first team all conference and first team all state. Can't wait to see what the future holds for this young runner, Kate Dyson. Our coaches award. Sophia Singer came into the season having run in the summer and was our number, one, our number six runner. And it takes five to score a meet. She came into the season almost happy just to be on the team. Came to practice every day trying to improve. But then her world turned upside down when Ollie came up injured as the fate of her season may actually ride it on with how Sophia raced and not just the rest of her top four girls. But not to my surprise, she stepped up to the plate, almost enjoying the new reliance on her hard training and wanted to be that number five, number five runner, wanted to perform to the best of her ability. She was a new runner. Many kids put, in, put into this position may have folded from the pressure, but Sophia absorbed herself in it and she was one of the main reasons we won conference and finished second in the state this year. I always tell her she is better than she believes and we work on that daily, but she is deserving of so much love and loved coaching her, Sophia Singer. Boys cross country. This was a very strange year for the boys cross country team as we only had two runners, but I still had to pick two runners to coach and these two runners came to practice every day and out of a wonderful attitudes, even though the team could not score in any meets. Our MVP was Connor Apple. He was our top finisher in every meet but more importantly, he pushed himself to higher limits during practices and wanted to improve every day. The one caveat to his training was that he trained together with the girls team, pushing those runners to new heights, which helped our girls team tremendously. Our coach's award goes to a kid I absolutely love coaching, Caden Riker. He showed up to our practice at the beginning of the year, barely able to even run three miles, but by the end of the year, we're dropping time by minutes, not seconds. I can't wait to have him back next year, Caden Riker. Every year, I give out an award for the best individual race of the year, this year, this award goes to Kate Dyson for her all-state performance at States. Tyler Matthews currently has the award, but we'll turn that over when he returns his uniform. We'll get that to you, Kate. Congratulations. This is our second place runner-up trophy for cross country this year. We're looking for a top one performance next year. Our goal is to win States. At this time, I would like to introduce the varsity boys soccer team from the 2019-20 year. Assistant coach, Rustin Thomas. Senior, David Adams. Senior, Carson Boyette. Senior, Jack Council. 
senior Trey Woodoff. Junior, all-conference, all-state, and all-region, Hamer Brigman. Junior, all-conference, all-state, all-region, and North Carolina Coaches Association, all-state, George Colt. Junior, Ryan Lim. Junior, Jack Merritt. Junior, all-conference, Miles Patterson. Junior, Mikey Schwartz. Junior, all-conference, Cook Smith. Junior, Josiah Toms. Sophomore, Adam Elsian. Sophomore, Jonah Keshgarian. Sophomore, Holland Show. Sophomore, Max Van Dessel. Freshman, Cleveland Armantrout. Freshman, Bo Brigman. Freshman, Cruz Hessling. And eighth grader, Ben Van Dessel. Also would like to recognize our manager, Jackson Todd. The 2019 season was an incredible year for our soccer program. Nobody knew what to expect, but I knew from the first day of tryouts, this group was not backing down from anyone, and we had four senior leaders that were all about team. We had to deal with some major injuries for pretty much the entire season, and I don't think we were ever 100% healthy, but nobody ever made excuses. These guys just came to work every day and got better as a team every week. I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to coach in my 20th season with the Westchester soccer program. From our early morning training sessions, annual mountain bonding trip, pride and academic integrity, and mentoring younger players, I never had one issue with this group for an entire season. We accomplished many of our goals this year and had so much fun along the way on the journey. From the Barfarama episode at the first tryout date, to the endless conversations about Minecraft, to the huge comeback victory against High Point Christian at HPU, to the incredible golden goal by an eighth grader finish against Caldwell on senior night. This season will never be forgotten. My first thank you tonight goes to my assistant coach, a Westchester alum who played for five years at Westchester and someone whom now I call a friend. Thank you, Coach Thomas, for always making this job so much fun and for always sharing your passion of soccer with the boys. Thank you to our great manager, Jackson Todd. Jay Todd is a member of this team, and I cannot thank you enough for the love and passion to help this team be successful. I cannot wait to share the sideline with you for one more season next fall. I would also like to thank all of our incredible ball boys and girls, scorekeepers, water pourers, and cup picker uppers. Thank you for all the pride you have in our program. The last group of people I would like to thank are all of our team parents, our team moms, Jenny Filo and Judy Adams, from your support, positive cheering, tailgating, and overriding love for your children. Thank you. The first award I would like to give tonight is the Squad Award, named after seven incredible seniors from four years ago. The legacy of these seven seniors will last for many years to come within the soccer program, and this award this year is going to three of our current seniors. These boxes of lucky charms will always remind you of how lucky we were to share this time together, and if you ever need a little good luck along the way. You three have been inspirational to the younger guys on this team. Three of the best teammates I have ever coached and who always put others before themselves. I'm so honored to have coached these three, but more proud of what they have accomplished as true student athletes at Westchester. The 2019 Squad Award winners, seniors Carson Boyette, Trey Woodall, and Jack Council. The next award I would like to give tonight is the Wildcat Award. This award goes to two young men who have been around the varsity soccer team for years and who always love seeing the program experience success year in and year out. These young men are leaders on and off the field, always show a tremendous amount of character and always put the team first by sacrificing offensive output to help lock down the defensive unit. These young men are and will always be what the Westchester soccer program is all about. They take pride in leaving the program better than they found it. They are student athletes who do it the right way. It is my honor to present our team's Wildcat Awards to senior David Adams and junior Hamer Brigman. 
Our last team award for the night is the MVP award. It is always really hard for me to give an MVP award because I believe great teams are built by the entire team. However, this player, without a doubt, separated himself this year on the field. Our MVP award is going to a young man that I am so proud of and everything he has accomplished at Westchester, both in the classroom and on the field. Having to come back after two knee surgeries his sophomore year, breaking his arm midway through this season, and dealing with ankle issues, he still found a way to score 37 goals while being man-marked and double-teamed most of the season. He was named the PTAC Conference Player of the Year, NCISAA All-State, NCSCA All-Region, and a member of the NCSCA All-State team. And in my mind, can only get better before next season. He is highly respected by his teachers, coaches, teammates, and even his opponents. It is my pleasure to give the Varsity Soccer MVP award to a leader, a competitor, and a champion Wildcat, Junior George Culp. Our season ended this past fall in the state tournament on Kennedy Field in our third straight Final Four appearance. I will never forget our conversation after that game, and I know the returning players will be playing for more than themselves next fall. And that is what continues to make me so proud about coaching this program. These guys continue to honor the players who came before them with an incredible amount of strength and determination. I know how hard these guys are working right now individually, and we hope to make it back to the Final Four next October, this time to bring home a championship back to Westchester. The boys have been working hard since November, and we look forward to seeing you all at the much-anticipated alumni soccer game on Friday night, August 7th, we hope. Thank you for all of your support, love, and spirit this past season, and we look forward to bringing another star to the Shield in 2020. Thank you. I'm Dave Carrier. I'd like to introduce our varsity boys basketball team. Senior Jackson Weil, junior Hamer Brigman, junior Tyler Matthews, junior Miles Patterson, Sophomore, Ben Bublitz. Sophomore, Adam Elsied. Sophomore, Jackson Morgan. Sophomore, Zen Sadler. Sophomore, Holland Schof. Freshman, Bo Brigman. Freshman, Tommy Maddox. Freshman, J3 Swindell. Freshman, Evan Walters. And my student assistant this year was the legend Jackson Todd. I want to have a few thank yous before I get going good. Number one, I want to thank Laura Weil and Jaina Patterson for being our team moms. Uh, these two ladies made it so easy for me. They got, we went through a lot of snacks, a lot of drinks. This was the eatingest team I ever had. They kept us supplied and sent out emails. And so Laura, we will miss you next year. Jaina, it's all on you. So we'll f try to find you a little bit of help, but thank y'all so much. Um, I also want to thank Bobby Matthews, who taped all of our games and sent them off to our film service. Bobby, you're great. Thank you for everything, for being so loyal and um, being there for us. I had two assistant coaches. The first one, Brooke Patterson, who we worked for most of the time I've been at, at Westchester. Brooke is, I look at Brooke like a co-coach. We do everything together. We talk throughout the day. We do a lot of talking. Um, he's great at scouting. He's great at teaching and he is one of the most encouraging, positive people I've ever been around. His father is my other assistant coach, who the first year of us together with Alan Patterson. Alan just retired, and he's the envy of all of us because he plays a lot of golf and he gets to coach kids, um, which I think we would all like to be able to do that. He's put his time in. Alan, thank you so much for everything you've done. Your experience and wisdom and your calm nature has really helped me. Those that know me know I'm not always the calmest. He's been great for me. Um, I mentioned Jackson Todd. J. Todd, we love you. Um, he did a great job for us with the stats. And J. Todd's almost like another assistant. Many times he'd come tell us what we were doing wrong. So J. Todd, thank you. I also want to thank our parents. This is one of the best group of parents I ever had. You guys were supportive. 
You supported all the kids, not just your kids, and you were there for us night in and night out. Thanks for all you guys did for us. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Atkinson and Coach Schwartz, who their constant support, being here to support the guys and be with the guys, um, just means so much. I've been at a couple other schools where you may or may not have the same support, and um, having Coach Schwartz and Mr. Atkinson be there is, is huge for us. Um, Basketball is a long year. It's a big sacrifice. I know kids are hardly ever there for their family meals. And so families, thank you for, for putting up with that. Um, to me, every season starts and ends with practice. Practice is what it's all about. Our practices were some of the best practices I've ever had since I've been at Westchester. Our attention to detail, our competitiveness, and our commitment was right on up there that makes teams great. I, I really love that too because we only had one senior. So next year with so many guys coming back, it's really gonna be exciting to see we take that to a next level. Watching our senior Jackson work and work and work and get better um, and work through injuries and be unselfish was a big deal for us. He was the lone senior. So with Jackson, I put a lot to my seniors and it was even harder for Jackson because Jackson worked so hard in the preseason and he was ready to explode on the scene. And then he got hurt and hurt his ankle about as bad as any ankle injuries I've ever seen. Jackson was there supporting, kind of coaching while he was hurt. He came back right after he came back and provided us a spark on the court, which I knew he'd give. But in a way, I think he learned a lot by sitting there and watching. Um, Jackson, I'm gonna miss you terribly. And if I had to have one senior, having you as that one senior is just about perfect. Some highlights. We swept our, rev, our rival Caldwell. We beat him at HPU and we beat him here. Uh, at one point in the year, we had a six game winning streak, which with our schedule is tough to do. But that six game winning streak, really, we were really able to learn a lot about ourselves. We won the first ever Wildcat, our first ever Wildcat Invitational, beating Harold's Christian, who's traditionally one of the better teams in the state in the championship game. We won at High Point Christian, which was a big game. In that game, Jackson had 30 and J3 had 38. First time at Westchester, I've had two kids had 30 or more points in the same game. Um, that was a big win for us. Um, in our state tournament, we qualified for the state tournament, got a bye, and then we played Friendship Christian, who had one great player, um, and we played one of our best offensive games of the year. We scored 102 points. We blew them out. Um, and that was our last home game and scoring over 100 for the first time this year. I love that. I like, I like it when teams get up and down. Being in the gym right now, it kind of hurts my heart a little bit that, that we're not all in here. Um, we did lose to Gaston Day. We didn't play our best game in the state tournament, but we fought and we fought and fought till the buzzer went off and lost a close game to Gaston Day. That was tough. Um, guys on the team, thank you guys for everything, for your work, your dedication. I know it's tough in the winter, you know, it's dark when we leave, it's dark when you come to school, and I just appreciate your guys' effort and enthusiasm the whole year long. The coach's award for our team goes to a junior that had to play point guard for us and did a great job. He's versatile, he's hardworking, he has a great attitude, and he no doubt will be one of our best leaders next year. My coach's award goes to Miles Patterson. My Wildcat award goes to Jackson Weil. I talked about Jackson earlier, but again, I just want to mention the highs and the lows that he has gone through to get to this point are going to help him later on in life. So the, the, the easy answer for our coaches, oh, I'm sorry, for my Wildcat Award is Jackson. Um, he finished the year strong and had an unbelievable year battling through injuries. My most valuable player scored 509 points this year. For a, for a high school player to score 1,000 in a career they get put up there, they get recognized, they get put on a pedestal. To score 509 points, which I think is over half of a thousand, your freshman year, I've never had a player come close to that. He's the best rebounder I've ever coached. Um, and so my MVP this year goes to a kid that made Allstate as a freshman, was J3 Swindell. I wanna thank the players again, thank y'all for everything. Um, I miss seeing y'all every day and can't wait to see you guys again soon. I'm ready for next year.
I am Coach Rodney Byerly, and I would like to welcome our 2019-2020 swim team army, as I normally do. Um, girls, we have senior Reagan Cottrell, senior Maggie Wheatley, sophomore Olivia Beaver, sophomore Maggie Berry, sophomore Sydney Briggs, sophomore Kate Dyson, freshman Liza Foster, freshman Skylar Manning, freshman Sophie Stouffris, eighth grade Mallory Atkinson, Lyndon Briggs, Maggie O'Keefe, Isabella Reed, seventh grade Ava Apple, Mary Frances Collins, Lucy Corrigan, and Megan Reidenauer. For the boys team, we have seniors David Adams, Slate Miller, and Chase Portaro. Juniors, Jamie Atkinson, Aiden Kahn, Jack Merritt, and Mikey Schwartz, and Frank Seitz. Sophomores, Wills Hurd. Eighth grade, Ben Hunsberger. Eighth grade, Bennett Robinson, and seventh grade, Brooks Robinson. And we have manager, Debbie Noyes. So each season, I have the opportunity to work with a great group of student athletes, to train them physically and mentally, to teach them and watch them grow. Though there was more to handle this season, it was the easiest and the most rewarding yet. This is a testament to the great group from our middle schoolers all the way to our seniors, bonding together to form a strong team. Some accomplishments they've amassed this season, from learning to dive to setting school records, from first time roles in play productions to scholarship offers from first visits to Popeyes to homecoming queen and king. A state medal and best placing at states in eight years to multiple other awards. So congratulations to an amazing season team. To our team families, thank you for volunteering your time and being there to cheer us on. Thank you team moms, India Miller and Katie, we Katie Wheatley for your support your organization and making sure this team was well taken care of and represented, especially for the extras you did for the seniors this year. To Debbie Noyes, I'm sure everyone is already aware of the many things she does on campus. In addition to all those, she also drove our bus to every meet, was our team manager and also stepped back up to a team mom role again. After some deliberation, she actually declined the role of assistant coach. This was the first time I'd seen her deny being able to do something, which confirmed that she actually is still human. We have great respect for all for you and thanks for all you do. To my senior swimmers and the whole class of 2020, life is unpredictable. There are challenges, collective and individual, but never be broken, not completely broken, mend adapt and overcome. Remember to use those health class lessons of resiliency. And don't let the present circumstances deter you from your potential greatness. Thank you for all the great memories. We will miss you and best wishes on all your future endeavors. For our awards, Coach's Award, new to the team this year, this individual stepped up to learn competitive swimming for the first time. Even in this short time, you made great progress, learning and fine tuning new skills faster than anyone expected. While it was all three years overdue, I'm so glad you chose to spend your last one with us. Congratulations, Reagan Cottrell. For our next award, you've played a major role in this team for several years. While most dread doing the longest, excuse me, while me most dread doing the longest or most difficult events, you requested them, constantly challenging yourself to improve and be your best. Though a health emergency and an extended time away from the pool may have deterred many people, you stayed on track and finished your final state meet with your best 100 fly time. Congratulations, Maggie Wheatley. Next award, while you insisted that you weren't an athlete and didn't like racing, I saw otherwise. Though you may have overlooked consistently setting personal records and pulling points for your team in both individual and relay events, 
I noticed. Your biggest challenge came in swimming the 200 IM and 500 free at the conference meet, but it also brought out your best. The work ethic, attitude, and dance moves of this individual are things that we should all strive for. Congratulations, Chase Portaro. For our Wildcat Awards, always smiling, always a joy to have around, always gives her best at all times, always willing to attempt any event, not only without complaining, but with that same smile. You're a coach's dream and your shoe game doesn't hurt either. It's my pleasure to give this Wildcat Award to Olivia Beaver. And for our boys team, while your leadership was a welcome standout skill this season, it's difficult to find the appropriate things to say about someone that does everything so well. Except, don't leave early. You can't leave early. But while these years seem to have just slipped by, I find you leaving too early yet again. Though this time it can't be prevented, I'm certain that you are destined for many more great accomplishments. And I can't wait to see the same excitement then as I did each time you qualified for a state event. Congratulations to David Adams. For our MVP, being the strength of our relays and placing second and fourth at the state meet, we are super proud of you. While even Katie Ledecky still gets nervous before a race, it's easy to understand feeling this way when you are the youngest on the block. But this just proves that you've been put, excuse me, this just proves that you've put in more work to get to this point earlier. So continue on your path and swim with purpose. Purpose, we will be cheering for you the whole way. Congratulations to Skylar Manning. For our boys MVP, from being the slowest on the team to breaking an 18 year old school record, it's clear you're a major success story. One would typically have to swim on a year round team for a long time to reach this level but this journey just began last summer. Due to this massive improvement in such a short time, he may have expected to receive this year's MVP award, but I made it clear he'd have to earn it. Upon calculating points during going into the state meet, I was shocked to see that there was a tie. So congratulations on all your hard work and earning this MVP award, Aiden Kahn. And though last on this list, but definitely not in the pool. In fact, he's the fastest all around male swimmer Westchester has had in many years. And not just in one, and two, one or two events, but in seven out of eight individual events. At his practices in eighth grade, I would ask, Slade, why are you always sitting on the side of the pool? I'm finished, he replied. With everyone else still swimming, I definitely didn't believe him. But soon, I'd realized he was telling the truth. This season, he stepped up in a major way, taking on a role as team captain, showing more responsibility and determination, and ultimately setting a school record. So congratulations on your achievements and this MVP award, Slate Miller. Thank you. I'm Christiana Conrad, and I would like to introduce the 2019-20 varsity cheerleading team. Lulu Kohler, sophomore. Sophia Singer, sophomore. Madeline Adams, freshman. Electra Farson, freshman. Emily Carey, eighth grade. Avery Gasson, eighth grade. Katie Grace Lavelle, eighth grade. Georgia Moorfield, eighth grade. Kate Morgan, eighth grade. Riley Yanez, eighth grade. And Laura Yoakum eighth grade. Girls, I want to thank you for a wonderful season. We started the season with a very new team, bringing up eighth graders to join varsity. We got right to work and every member showed willingness to try new things and improve her skill. I'm so proud of your sportsmanship, positive attitudes, and encouragement of one another. 
You gave it your all, and that is everything a coach hopes for. Time for a few special recognitions. A huge thank you to our incredible team mom, Christy Morgan. We appreciate your help keeping us all on the same page and all the snacks. The first award goes to an amazing student athlete that rose to the challenge of being our voice of experience and team captain as a sophomore. Thank you for your positivity, organization, and willingness to always help your teammates. Our MVP is Sophia Singer. The next award goes to a new face on the team. She was an athlete that began the season a little timid, but transformed into one of our most valuable team members. She always had a hug or kind word for anyone who needed it. This young lady worked every day to improve her stunting skills and support her team, going so far as to lay down under a falling teammate if necessary. The Wildcat Award goes to Madeline Adams. The final award goes to another new face on the team. This young woman was always present and smiling. She showed an excitement for trying new tricks and developing her skill as a flyer. Additionally, she was always the first to jump up off the bench and show great spirit cheering on those Wildcats. My coach's award this year is for Lulu Collar. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mara Duncan. I'm here to present the 2019-20 Varsity Girls Basketball team. Senior, Katie Mack Wright. Junior, Dory Kiever. Junior, Libba Latham. Junior, Safa Tanuzi. Sophomore, Jordan Bradley. Sophomore, Lily Wilson. Freshman, Caroline Griffith. Freshman, Lucy Larkin Hurd. Freshman, Annabeth Merritt. Freshman, Ollie Schwartz and seventh grader, Elizabeth Schoaf. Our manager this year was Grace Evans. Hey guys, it's Coach Autry here. I uh, wanted to first let y'all know that Coach Ross could not be here. Uh, as you all know, she had a surgery and uh, had a minor infection, so she's at home recovering. I know that she's gonna miss, miss all y'all and would love to present uh, after all the hard work y'all put in. So we'll be thinking of her. We know she's going to be back on the sideline better than ever here shortly. So just wanted to, to let y'all know where she is and kind of start out uh, talking about the team, the season, and give a couple of awards. So uh, this was kind of last minute and figuring out she wasn't going to be here. I know that it, at times I had to step in and do some things off the cuff. So this will fit right in with our season. But Wanted to start by thanking the parents, um, first and foremost. We're very blessed to work with each of your kids. We take the responsibility seriously um, and want to commend each of you on what a great job you've done. I've been at some different schools, but the opportunity to work here is very unique. The culture here at Westchester is second to none. The family atmosphere um, and the support from the parents and the administration. Uh, next, I want to thank Headmaster Cobb Atkinson uh, for allowing us to coach and, and work here at this beautiful school. Um, he gives great support to the athletic program. Um, him and also obviously Coach Swartz, athletic director. Uh, we certainly couldn't do what we do without him. You know, one of the things that I'll say is they do things here the right way. You know, we, we get the right type of kids um, and they do things the way that it should be done. They don't cut any corners, and we're very blessed um, as both a staff and as parents to, to have their support. So thank each of them for their support and allowing us to do what we do. I know kind of building on that um, and saying doing things the right way, those, that way is not always the fastest, but it's the best long term. And uh, this season really represented that. You know, we, we Record-wise, we struggled, but we did a lot this year that maybe from an outsider perspective, people wouldn't see. The opportunity, we put in a lot of new offenses, a lot of new defenses. I feel like that this year, more than any year, we've set a culture to carry us forward. And just year after year, it's going to get better and better to we are one of the dominant programs in the triad and in the state, I have no doubt. Um, and I think we'll look back specifically to this year as kind of a turning point. 
So want to go into uh, the season a little bit, you know, kind of the highlights, obviously playing Calvary and beating them here at home. That was one of the, the best parts of the season and showed a lot of development up into that point. The Christmas tournament, it sent us off to a great Christmas break. Um, and then lastly, how we ended the year. I think if anyone, you know, looked at the year, it was encapsulated in that game. Uh, we, we watched a video before that game started about uh, from facing the Giants, giving your very, very, very best. And each kid did that. And, you know, that's all we can ask as coaches uh, from the kids is just that they give their best. And I think that that was evident. Um, and as we continue to give our best and then we continue to work and improve, that's where the results are really going to show. So kind of talking about the awards, whenever you give awards, you look at the team and uh, these awards could go to pretty much every kid on the team. But I'm going to start with our MVP. That goes to Dory Kiever. Uh, Dory uh, obviously was our leading scorer, but you know, her leadership that she provided uh, was, was a huge growth area for her. Uh, the ball handling that she's asked to do, you know, Dory's probably a natural shooting guard and she's forced to play point guard a lot. Uh, she often has one or two kids guarding her. She's having to guard one of the better players. Um, so as the game wears on, it's understandable that she would get tired. She doesn't complain. She does what we ask her to do. Uh, and again, that left hand's improved a lot. I'm excited to see where it is next year. So congratulations, Dory. Um, we're very blessed to have you on this team and thank you for all that you do. Next, the Wildcat Award. This goes to someone who's improved the most from last year to the following year or during that particular year. And uh, this one was the easiest award to give. Uh, it goes to our senior, Katie Mack Wright. Katie Mack, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed watching you improve. Uh, actually, you're probably the best bounce passer that we have on the team. And ironically enough, I bet if we did field goal percentage, you shoot one of the highest field goal percentages. So I know that you're going to do great things as you move on uh, to college and then on in your life into your career. It's going to be exciting for all of us here at Westchester to see your development and growth. Uh, and, and I know that based on basketball and everything I know about you, you're going to be very successful in life. And I know that you faced a lot of adversity this year, and more than anyone, uh, you persevered through that. And that that's, speaks a lot about your character. So thank you for allowing us to spend time with you each day. Lastly, the Coaches Award. You know, this is a, an award that we talked about in detail because there's so many kids on this team that, that did so many things that exemplify what this award stands for and that's just being a leader um, always going the extra mile doing your very best and you know we had a lot of kids that did that so but we we deliberated and we want to congratulate ollie sports on the coaches award uh, ollie you know at the beginning of the year sometimes you have to convince kids to be more unselfish uh, with ollie we needed to convince her to be a little more selfish because obviously we needed some additional scoring and I think that if you look at her average through the last couple of games versus the beginning of the year, there was some substantial growth in that area. Um, but most importantly, the growth was uh, on the defensive end and her ball handling. You know, we, we put her in a position, again, that probably may not be her natural position, um, but it certainly will be as time goes on. So congratulations, Ollie. Um, kind of moving forward, I want to talk about I'm not going to go into each player. You do deserve that, but for time's sake, I'm not going to. But I'm going to talk about, you know, the little things, taking charges, um, boxing out. Each of you all know um, things that I'd get on to you about, but you also know that when I would point out to you the things that you did well. If I could give an award uh, to each of you and kind of talk about, you know, the great sacrifices and, and what you bring to the table, I would. Um, and just know how much that both me, uh, Mar, and Coach Ross, how much uh, we value and love you guys. So kind of talking about that, we're going to miss Mara a ton. Um, you know, the six feet rule, so I, I'll have to tell her how much, you know, we really value her, how much she meant to the program from 
you know, making sure you guys were ready to play health-wise, to listen to me and Coach yell at y'all and yell about different things. So I just want to thank Mara. We're going to miss her. She was a tremendous asset to the program. I want to thank the team mom, Avery Mayer. Avery, your communication was second to none. Without the work that you put in and communicating to the team and to the other parents, we couldn't do what we do. Uh, unfortunately for you, Anna Beth is just going to be a sophomore next year, so I know you've got a lot of work ahead of you, but we're very blessed and thankful to have you. So from the bottom of our heart, thank you. Um, Jay Todd, you kept the books, and I don't know what you would, we would have done without you there to save us. Uh, I know a couple times last minute we called you, and uh, it was always comforting to look over and know that you were in charge and making sure that the score was right and the fouls were right and everything was up to speed. So just want to thank each of you. Um, you know, when, when you're able to work with a great group of kids and you reflect back on a season, you don't think about the wins and losses as much as you think about the personal development of each kid and the opportunity to coach each kid. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the parents. Thank you for providing uh, homes where your kids grew up the right way, uh, are respectful, um, put in the work, they want to get better, and most importantly, they're just a joy to be around. Every day, I know for all of us coaches, we look forward to coming in and working with your kids um, because not only hopefully did we have a good impact on them, but they had a huge impact on our lives uh, and it was something that we each look forward to. Um, it, the program, how it's transforming, it starts at the earliest levels. Um, it goes through middle school, obviously Devin, Mara, the job that they're doing, how much they're developing. Again, not just record-wise, but fundamental-wise. You know, it takes time um, to, to change a program and, and that, that change has started and it's going to continue. Um, you know, and, and it starts early on with parenting and then all the way through the middle school and up to us. So it's a kind of a culmination by the time that your kids get to us. So thank you so much. Um, the last thing I'll say is uh, the, the video that y'all sent the coach was hilarious. Um, I appreciate it. Obviously, you can see why I got back into coaching and not doing music as much. Um, and lastly, just we love y'all. We can't wait to next year. Grab a basketball, go out, get on a goal, start working on that shot, work on that left hand. Um, and, and you can picture me there in my country accent yelling at you guys. And uh, last thing I'll say is go Cats. So this is for the varsity girls soccer team coached by me, Robin Naren, and Mara Duncan. Our players are senior Georgia Brumfield, senior Caroline Clodfelter, senior Reagan Cottrell, senior Katie McWright, junior Dory Kiever, sophomore Olivia Beaver, sophomore Olivia Cecil, sophomore Anna Sloan Culp, sophomore Kate Dyson, sophomore Grace Evans, Sophomore Meredith Heron, sophomore Lily Wilson, freshman Emma Engel, freshman Caroline Griffith, freshman Lucy Larkin Hurd, freshman Madeline McHorter, freshman Annabeth Merritt, and freshman Ollie Schwartz. And we were managed by Ellison Beaver, a senior. As a Westchester alumna, I still remember the giddy excitement I held as soccer season neared each spring. After getting the opportunity to come back as a coach last year, I held the same giddy excitement while waiting for soccer season to start. Last year's season was everything we hoped it, it could be and more. Our team exceeded everyone's expectations and we had fun doing it. So after last year, we waited another grueling 283 days until soccer season came around again. Little did we know the season that we waited for all those days wouldn't turn out at all how we expected. 
life had other plans for us. When I look back on this season in the future, I won't remember all that went wrong. Instead, I will remember the constant laughs from all of you as we joked around during juggling drills gone terribly wrong. I will remember how each of you showed up to support your teammates who were in the school play. I will remember the excitement of the first game of the season and getting to play on the field at High Point University. I will certainly remember the elation of winning that game in a PK shootout and how proud I felt in that moment to be your coach. I will remember the joy of finally getting to watch you play on Kennedy Field. I will remember the thrill of getting to hand out nickname shirts after a really hard fought game and laughing together at all of our new additions. I will remember the trust and support you had in me as a coach. I will remember each of you and our time together. These are the type of memories that we need to hold on to. Mara, I would be remiss not to acknowledge you and all you did for our team. You jumped in this season as not only the athletic trainer for every single team at the school, but also as my assistant coach. This was above and beyond your call of duty, but you did so with enthusiasm. Despite many other obligations, you made this team a priority, and I know these girls thank the world of you for it. Mara, I cannot thank you enough for your contribution and your friendship. I would also like to thank Whitney Hurd for being our team mom this year, even when your daughter was only a freshman. I really appreciate all of your support. So we are not doing awards for this spring season, but I do want to take some time to recognize a few girls that deserve appreciation, my seniors. Ellison, it has been a joy to get to know you throughout this season. You are a delight to be around. As a manager, you jumped into the role during the first game without hesitation or question. You had done your homework and already knew everything you could about managing a soccer team from day one. I loved this preparation and I know your future is bright. Katie Mack, in two years of coaching you, I don't think I have ever seen you upset. Whether you were on the field or on the bench, you were a never ending support and role model for your teammates. Your positive attitude always shines through. I loved watching you step up this year as a senior and play defense against some really tough players when we needed you to. You worked hard every second you were on the field and did so while radiating positivity. Georgia, watching you develop as a player over the past two years has been a true joy. Each game during halftime, Georgia came up to me and asked, what can I do better to help the team? I can't tell you how many times we had these conversations, even when we were winning by multiple goals. She wasn't asking this selfishly or for reassurance, but because she cared deeply about our team. Georgia, I will never forget your two game winning penalty kicks and how you walked up to the PK line with all the confidence in the world because letting your team down wasn't even an option for you. Caroline, during our initial practices last year, I could tell you were athletic, but I wasn't quite sure if you were a true soccer player. However, after just one game, I could see I was very wrong. In all the games that I have seen you play, you never fail to be one of the hardest working players on the field. You fight every battle with tenacity. Despite not always loving your position as a defender, you never protested and said you would fill whichever role made the team better. And let me tell you, our team was always better with you fighting back there on defense. Reagan, you are an ideal player to coach. You are a true leader, a great listener, a friend to all, a hard worker, and a really fun player to watch on the field. Despite your love for playing forward and scoring goals, you never complained when you were asked to play back 
and help man mark some of the best players in the state. During practices and games, you tackled each moment or drill with determination and purpose. Your love for this game really showed through this year as you worked hard for our team as a captain and senior leader. I know you were heartbroken about the early end to our season, but please know that your time as a player will be remembered. To the rest of the team, I have so much faith in your abilities. I know the future of Westchester girls soccer is bright and that you will do amazing things in the years to come. I am so proud of all of you and I can't wait to come back and watch you play next year. This year's boys varsity tennis team consisted of Michael Calabrese, Aiden Apple, Ryan Lim, Wills Hurd, Holland Schoff, Jackson Tuggle, Christian Riker, and Max Varellen. And I'm the coach, Jeff Hunt. So it's truly hard to know what to say about a season that might have been. However, boys tennis was blessed, unlike many other spring sports, to get in two matches before being called off. And from these two matches, we can extrapolate a number of things. So here are some facts. In our first competition, Max Varellen lost in a tie. He's a player who's always needed some time to warm up, and in our second match, he won, going from a narrow 7-5 set win to a clean 6-0 sweep. Our number two, Michael Calabrese, lost his first match, and then narrowly lost his second in an 8-10 tiebreaker. Jackson Tuggle went from losing his first match to winning his second. Ryan Lim and Holland Schoff improved in singles and won their second doubles match together. Aiden Apple joined us, and Wills Hurd and Christian Riker decreased their spreads very impressively. So the extrapolation. We went from losing 9-0 to 6-3, and I think if we got in a third match in, we would have seen an easy victory. And thus, I expect great things from our players next year. But as for this season, we got in a lot of practices, and what I'll remember most will not be the fact that we got shut down, but rather the rabid competition we had among players. Cutthroat, but at the same time, very friendly. It was constant challenges and constant improvement. To consider some other highlights, Jackson, in his second year on the tennis team ever, was moving up in the rankings. Holland, in his first year, was in the top six. Christian, who was mainly a practice player in last year, got to play in two singles and a doubles match. And Max grew two feet from the year prior and based on that trajectory, we expect him to be an eight-foot monster next year who will soon completely dominate. Our players were a joy to see day in and day out, and they kept me on my toes, my toes, constantly wanting to try new drills and exercises. Again, I'm sure next year will be a lot. But more, most importantly, I want to talk about one player who won't be returning. We wish Michael the best, and boy, what was objectively the shortest run on the tennis team as captain we can say that he was the most effective. Michael was constantly willing to talk about strategy, to lead practices, to encourage peers, and to be basically a co-coach. He was never sad, he was always friendly, and I'd be amiss if I didn't tell my favorite story about him from last year, when after a grueling home match, we all swept the courts, lined them, and then Michael, being slightly tired, but still wanting to do his part, as always, decided to sweep and line the already clean courts again. Or there is the end of the year family match when Michael played his dad. Michael, we know this year you give him an even better run for his money because you're in your spot on the tennis team this season, constantly fending off challenges with a confidence I admire. And it wasn't just me. Coaches always took note of Michael, telling me how good and friendly our lone senior was how, and how impressed they were by his habit of switching his racket between his left and right hands. Michael, you'll be short, sorely missed next year, and I feel blessed to have gotten to coach you for two seasons and to have you in an English class. Michael's leaving big shoes for everyone to fill, which goes to show what type of a player he is and what type of player we have on our tennis team. Thank you so much to Mrs. Deb Tuggle for being our team mom, and I absolutely can't wait to see everyone next year, and take care. Go Cats! At this time, I would like to introduce the varsity boys golf team from this spring. Sophomore Henry Erickson, junior Griffin Francois, and sophomore Jackson Morgan. The spring golf season of 2020 was cut short 
due to the coronavirus. However, what I will always remember about this year's team was how dedicated these three guys were to improving. We had some great team practices, a great first match at Oak Valley and Clemens, and a wonderful team dinner to celebrate. Jackson Morgan held on to the NigelBHootie.com World Putting Championship team jacket after an eight-hole playoff with his coach and added the much-coveted Spoonie jacket to his closet this year. Congratulations, Jackson. With our team not having any seniors, I truly am looking forward to coming back out next spring with these group of guys. And hopefully a few more will join us and we will compete for some championships. I know these guys will compete hard on the links this summer and I look forward to playing with them as much as I can. Thank you to Jackson, Griffin, and Henry for a great few weeks and I can't wait until we get another shot together next spring. Thank you. Hey Wildcat Nation, it's Coach McLemore here uh, to introduce the 2019-2020 varsity baseball team. Senior Carson Boyette, Senior Jackson Weil, Senior Trey Woodall, Junior Austin Melton, Junior Cook Smith, Junior Jackson Todd, Sophomore Grayson Chapman, Sophomore Trey Johnson, Freshman Carson Daniel, Freshman Caleb Hammond, Freshman Tommy Maddox, Freshman J3 Swindell, 8th grader Tate Bogler, and 7th grader Josh Hammond. We, are, we were managed by Libba Latham, and my assistant coach this year was Rob Woodall. I um, want to start off just by saying uh, that the baseball season, obviously, and, and all the teams in the spring uh, seasons didn't go as planned, but uh, I want to say I couldn't be more proud of the work that my guys put in, not only during the spring season, but throughout the school year. We started with workouts early in the fall season um, and, and through the winter up into the spring. Um, I know how hard it, it has to be for my, our guys not to be able to compete and, and show all the hard work that we put in this off season, um, but we did and were able to show a little bit of what we had to offer in the first two games of the season that we did, we were able to play. Um, we came away with two wins from Rocky Mount against two of the better teams in the state, um, two teams who actually account for the last three state championships. So we were very proud of that and looking forward to the season. And, and um, unfortunately that did not get to happen, but I wanna give a, a special recognition first to um, my team mom, Marianne Smith. Uh, Marianne Smith uh, helps in a variety of ways, mainly organizing um, snacks and things for, for the boys and email communication to the parents. So thank you, Marianne Smith. Um, but want to give a, uh, a very sincere and, and um, deep appreciation to the three seniors that I did have. Um, Carson Boyette, I know this was your first year with us, um, but I really appreciated your leadership and um, how willing you were to get better every single day. Um, I know I appreciate that as a coach, and I know some of the younger guys um, could see um, the effort that you were putting in. Jackson Wow, I know for the past few years I've been begging you to come out and play. Um, I hate that I didn't get to see you progress through a whole season, um, but proud of the way that you came and competed um, and, and was, were willing to help us be successful this year. Um, Trey Woodall, um, this was our team leader. Um, Trey, I, I can't thank you enough for, for everything that you did for the baseball program. Um, even though we didn't get to have a season, your leadership and your dedication to the program is going to be shown through the, throughout the next few years, and, and I can't thank you enough. Um, Coach Schwartz, as always, thank you so much for, for helping the baseball team get anything they need and supplying us for, with the things that we need to be a successful program and have one of the best facilities in the state. Um, with that, I'll just say congratulations to all the athletes this season uh, and all the seasons, and can't wait um, and look forward to seeing you guys compete next season. Uh, with that, go Cats! Boys and girls track, David Adams, senior, Jack Council, senior, Hammer Brigman, George Culp, Tyler Matthews, Jack Merritt, Mikey Schwartz, Bump Ben Bublitz, Adam Usulid, Duncan Grimes, Alex Hicks, Zen Sadler, Henry Scott, Connor Apple, Cleveland Amatron, Davis Beck, Bo Brigman, 
Cruz Hessling, Jacob Johnson, Quinto Kiemethong, Evan Walters, Miracle Olivimani, Caden Riker, Graham Tucker, Zane Williamson, Maggie Wheatley, Sr., Para Pacara, Sophia Singer, Ella Timberlake, Mallory Atkinson, Lyndon Briggs, Ava Klein, Maggie O'Keefe, Isabel Reed, Ava Apple, Audrey Guppy, and Evelyn Porter. Boys and Girls Track Team. What can I really say about this upcoming season as we all have never experienced anything like this in our lives? We had just started our season not even run, running one meet when the season was canceled. I thought at first we'd all return after a few brief weeks off, but when it became apparent we would finish for the season, my mind thought mostly of just my three seniors. You see, David Adams, Jack Council, and Maggie Wheatley had run for me for the past 16 years combined. All kinds of memories raced through my mind as I had sincerely enjoyed coaching these three kids. And sometimes you really don't appreciate something until it's missing or gone from your daily life. These kids have not only been fantastic performers, but more important, tremendous role models for our younger kids. These three seniors did as they preached daily at practice, pushing kids to higher limits as they were all my captains. I sincerely hope they appreciate not only what they meant to me on a daily basis, but also to what the other kids on the team. Best wishes to you all, Coach. At this time, I would like to recognize the Academic All-Conference Team. It is sponsored by the Piedmont Triad Athletic Conference. One of the greatest achievements for our student athletes, an individual must receive a 3.5 GPA through the third marking period and have lettered in two varsity sports this year. Our 2019-20 Westchester Academic All-Conference student athletes are seventh grader, Mary Frances Collins, eighth grader, Emily Carey, Georgia Moorfield, Isabella Reed, Lyndon Briggs, Maggie O'Keefe, Mallory Atkinson, freshman, Ollie Schwartz, Anna Beth Merritt, Bo Brigman, Caroline Griffith, Cleveland Armentrout, Connor Apple, Cruz Hessling, Evan Walters, Lucy Larkin Hurd, Madeline Adams, and Tommy Maddox. Sophomores, Anna Sloan Culp, Ella Timberlake, Grace Evans, Holland Schof, Jackson Morgan, Kate Dyson, Lily Wilson, Olivia Beaver, Olivia Cecil, Sophia Singer, and Zen Sadler. Juniors, Cook Smith, Dory Keever, George Culp, Hamer Brigman, Jack Merritt, Jackson Todd, Mikey Schwartz, Miles Patterson, Ryan Lim, Tyler Matthews, and seniors, Carson Boyette, David Adams, Jack Council, Jackson Weil, Katie Mack Wright, Maggie Wheatley, Reagan Cottrell, and Trey Woodall. Congratulations to all of our student athletes. You will be receiving your certificate in your packet on Friday. Thank you. Hey Wildcat Nation, I'm Mara Duncan, and as the athletic trainer and middle school coach, I have had uh, the privilege of watching most of your student athletes compete in practices and games on a daily basis. Knowing that these eighth graders uh, will be leading their class in athletics going into upper school is very exciting. The first award goes to the male and female student athlete that showed a tremendous amount of heart, hustle, leadership, and most of all sportsmanship towards their opponents, teammates, coaches, referees, and fans. The recipient of this year's Schwartzmanship Award is an eighth grader who competed on the varsity volleyball team, varsity cheer team, and played middle school soccer this spring before our season was cut short. Described by her coaches as bub bubbly, dignified, hardworking, and always willing to do what's right, no matter what her teammates are doing, and is always smiling, we were ecstatic when we got her back at Westchester after leaving for a few years. Congratulations to Emily Carey, this year's Middle School Female Schwartzmanship Award winner. The male recipient was a quiet yet fierce competitor on the middle school boys soccer field and was the number one player on the boys ten varsity boys tennis team this spring before the pandemic started. 
He is reg uh, regarded as a great teammate, willing to play any position while working hard and never complaining. Coach Schwartz is excited to get him for the next four years on the varsity soccer team. Congratulations to Max Varellen, this year's Middle School Boys Schwartzmanship Award winner. These next two awards go to the male and female middle school athletes that have proven to make the biggest impact on the playing field this year. The female athlete of the year goes to two young ladies who contributed to the varsity volleyball team in the fall, as well as leading other middle school sports throughout the year. The first young lady has come a long way in her middle school career and will only get better and stronger in high school. She played volleyball, basketball, and soccer for the last three years and improved each year with little complaint. She is shy, goofy, a great friend and teammate, and loves playing sports like her mom. I can't wait for her to, I can't wait to come back and watch her play these next few years. Congratulations, Covington Hauser, our middle school female co-athlete of the year. The second female athlete of the year is one of the most competitive athletes I have ever coached at WCDS. She is an incredibly talented and naturally gifted volleyball player, as well as a solid contributor on the middle school soccer field. She plays high level club volleyball all year round while competing for Westchester teams as well. She will definitely be one to watch as she continues to develop and grow throughout upper school and beyond. Congratulations to Morgan Grace Connor, our second middle school female co-athlete of the year. The male athlete of the year goes to a young man who is new to Westchester this year. He has certainly made a big impact on the basketball court and baseball field. The first thing that comes to mind when you see him is, wait, this kid's in middle school? No way. He's a great teammate, fierce competitor, and wonderful kid to coach. Unfortunately, we never got to see him play a home baseball game due to the way our spring sports season ended. But I will definitely be back to watch him and the varsity baseball team win a state championship in the next few years. Keep working hard, be yourself, and you will be in the MLB in no time. Congratulations to this year's middle school male athlete of the year, Tate Vogler. At this time, I would like to invite head of school Cobb Atkinson to the camera as he presents the 2019-20 Male and Female Scholar Athlete and Athlete of the Year Awards. The Female Scholar Athlete Award goes this year to Katie Mack Wright. Katie Mack ran cross country in the fall, was on the basketball team in the winter, served as captain and was the Wildcat Award winner, and was the captain of the girls soccer team in the spring. Coach Anderson remarks of Katie Mack that she is one of the most pleasant people he has ever been associated with. Her basketball coaches cite Katie Mack's willingness to work hard, to play any role, and her great leadership for all of the young basketball, all of the young basketball team. She handles adversity with grace. Her kindness and love for the people around her and her teammates radiate through her work ethic and the way she treats people. Katie Mack led by example. She was always positive and uplifted everyone around her. She adopted to her role and never quit working to be the best she could possibly be. Congratulations, Katie Mack. The Male Scholar Athlete Award this year goes to Trey Woodall. Trey played soccer in the fall, was a senior leader and the recipient of the squad award, and he was captain of the baseball team. From Coach Swartz, although Trey spent only a year with us, it seemed like he was on, with our soccer program for his entire high school career. He came in, showed his maturity, leadership, and pride in doing things the right way from day one. Nothing was more evident than this work ethic in the classroom, soccer field, and on the baseball field. He was an honor to coach, and I only wish we could have spent more time together. Coach McLemore says, I coached Trey, and he is truly a smart and impressive kid. He knows what he wants, and he goes out and gets it. Although baseball did not go as planned this year, I believe Trey, although baseball did not go as planned this year, I believe Trey will persevere and accomplish all his goals in college and the years to come. 
It was a true honor coaching him. Congratulations, Trey. Uh, the following awards are chosen by the coaches and require recipients to play at least two varsity sports this year. The female athlete of the year this year is Maggie Wheatley. Maggie played for the cross country team, the swim team, and the track team and was captain all three seasons. She was all conference, all state, and an MVP in cross country, won the coaches award and was a four year swimmer and was a four year runner for the track team. Coach Byerly said of Maggie that she was the only student he's, he knows to ask if she could swim the 500 again. He appreciated her gratitude for her coaches and all that they've done for her. And he especially valued the resilience that she's learned over her four years as a swimmer. Coach Anderson said that Maggie was without question one of the most tenacious runners he had ever encountered. Maggie, your tenacity and resilience will certainly serve you well as you continue your running career at Denison University. The male athlete of the year is David Adams, captain of the soccer team, swim team, and track teams. David is an incredible leader. He won the Wildcat Award and was a four-year player on the soccer team. Also won the Wildcat Award for swimming and was a three-year swimmer. Was captain of the track team and a four-year runner. Coach Byerly reports that David was always ready to work hard. The first one at every practice to ask, what's the warm-up, coach? And he could always be counted on to help. Coach Anderson said that David is one of the most goal-oriented runners he'd ever encountered. Lots of kids have ideas, but not specific goals about what they want to achieve. And Coach Swartz says, and I quote, David Adams is what defines a true Wildcat student athlete at Westchester. He never complained about lack of playing time when he was younger, but just put his head down and went to work. Along the way, he gained the respect and admiration of every one of his teammates and coaches. He's earned all the accolades and did it with the utmost class, honor, and sportsmanship. He's as loyal and positive as any athlete that Coach Schwartz has ever seen during his 20 years at Westchester. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to drive to Charlottesville, Virginia and sit down with Bruce and Betsy Hathaway, the parents of Bruce Hathaway Jr. I wanted to meet this great family and get a better understanding of who Bruce Hathaway Jr. was during his time at Westchester. This award means an incredible amount to me and I want to make sure you all know the history of this award as we give it out every spring. Unfortunately, the Hathaways are not with us here this evening but I have some words that I shared with you all last year, and I wanted to make sure everyone knows the true meaning of this award. The following is from Bruce's best friend, alum, and current parent, Moore Council. The Bruce Hathaway Memorial on the lower soccer field is more than a nice tribute. It represents a reminder to all that view it that a great person once lived and brought great life to Westchester. Bruce was my childhood best friend, and he died in a tragic car accident during college. Even though he left us way too early in life, in the time he was with us, he made a major impact in many of our lives. I know he made a big difference in mine as Bruce loves sports and the University of North Carolina. I think that is what brought us together as friends. Bruce was a fierce competitor, but more importantly, a great leader and sportsman. He played multiple varsity sports, but his greatest passion and where he excelled was on the soccer field. He went on to play college soccer for Guilford, and during his only season with them, they beat Carolina, Duke, and State. What I want you to remember now and in the future is that Bruce was still, is, an important part of this great school. The Bruce Hathaway Award, in my mind, is the most special award given here tonight. It represents the kind of person you should strive to be. I hope what I have shared with you gives you a taste of who this great person was. When you see Bruce's memorial, think of the life he led. I know Bruce is watching and cheering at every home soccer game, and it touches my heart to know that his memory lives on through this award. 
Thank you more for sharing with us great memories and thoughts about Bruce. Our male and female Bruce Hathaway Jr. Award winners this year, I believe, are some of our greatest leaders that I have experienced during my 20 years at Westchester. Their coaches learned early on how important they are to all of their teams. They all love Westchester, and I know they will always give back to their great school. Like Bruce, they have a way of making everybody smile, but they are some of the fiercest competitors you could ever play against. I will miss watching all of these athletes compete wearing a Wildcat uniform, but I know the class, sportsmanship, and honor they always played the game with will certainly be exhibited in our Wildcats of the future, thanks to their leadership. It is my honor and extreme pleasure to present the 2020 Bruce E. Hathaway Junior Award for Sportsmanship to seniors Reagan Cottrell, Jack Council, and Jackson Weil. The Westchester Iron Cat Award is given annually to the student athlete who participates in Westchester athletics during all three seasons, during all four years in high school. It is my honor to present the Iron Cat Award to one recipient this year, one who runs in the fall and spring and swims during the winter months and is an incredible leader, student athlete, and teammate. Congratulations, Maggie Wheatley, for representing Westchester for 12 straight seasons at the highest level. Caring people help others not because they expect a reward, but because it is natural to show kindness. Over the last six years, we have been so fortunate to have a staple within our athletic department who has cared for so many of our student athletes. She has always done it with a smile, with the highest level of professionalism, and has even brought a level of competitiveness to the table to help make our athletes stronger physically and mentally. Unfortunately for us, she will be leaving this summer to follow her dream of becoming a physician's assistant. All I know is that her future patients will be so lucky to have her by their sides. We were so lucky to have her with us for the last six years, and although our ice bag budget skyrocketed after games, because everyone needed multiple bags, especially the boys. Every second of our time together was special, fun, and memorable. So for the last award this evening, the Westchester Athletic Department would like to present the first and only Ice Cat Award to our special trainer, Mara Duncan. Thank you for everything you gave our kids over the last six years and for showing us all what kindness looks like through caring. Thank you, Mara. Good luck at ECU, and don't be a stranger around our sidelines. I would like to thank Devin McLemore for helping me put this video together this evening. Without this help, there's no telling what this would have looked like. Thank you all for making this evening so special. I hate that we couldn't be together in person, but hopefully you felt the incredible Wildcat spirit from home. I hope we're all together doing what we love to do in the fall. And until then, stay healthy and safe and have a great summer. Congratulations again to all of our student athletes, coaches, and families on an incredible year. Go Cats!